Do you believe that you can change someone's mind? Oh yes, definitely. I change my little brother's mind all the time. I think I'm quite stubborn, so it's harder for other people to try and change my mind. Can you change someone's mind? Yes, definitely. Might take a lot of time, but I think you can. Everyone doesn't want to admit they're wrong, <laughs> but that's just, you know, human nature. People are always going to have different opinions. It just depends on the person's mind you're trying to change and how you talk to them. Yeah, to win an argument, I think you should just really explain your point in depth and why you think so. And give evidence as to why you're right and they're wrong. It's important that you do let people change their mind because it shows progression. Michaela Loach is a climate justice activist who has a lot of practice at being persuasive. I want to ask you uh, about being an activist because your business is changing people's minds. Mm -hmm. And I want to know how you do it. I think a really important part of that is like meeting people on their level and having empathy, because I think it can be so easy um, to like distance ourselves from each other or not realize how similar often we are. And in reality, I think all of us really want a lot of the same things. How do you get that empathy? Rather than being like, you should care about the thing I already care about, instead saying, oh, this is something you care about. Well, it actually links to this other thing and we can actually do something that will create something better if we work together. Also, we're not going to be able to change everyone's mind and that's fine and that's all right. If you were to think about slogans and hashtags, what do you think makes a good one or what makes a good campaign name? That's a good question. I think that um, like something that, some that people will remember is really important. Something that's like quick and snappy. Maybe it rhymes. Maybe it like can have a bit of humour to it. It can also help. And more than that, I think also things that are like uplifting can be really helpful as well. Things that people are going to read it and think, oh, I want to be part of that. Have you got one you're particularly proud of? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's a slogan, but the name of one of our campaigns was Paid to Pollute. And in that name, you can immediately see like, oh, someone's being paid to pollute. It's very easy, very snappy. And in that campaign, we we're trying to communicate the fact that the fossil fuel companies are paid to pollute by the UK government through fossil fuel subsidies. Where did you learn the kind of the techniques and the attitudes that enable you to, to help people think differently? And I think that a lot of this and a lot of confidence, in my opinion, comes from like failing loads of times and getting it wrong so many times. But the more that you do something, the better you get at it and the more confident you get with it as well. And it's funny because um, I think I'm much more confident about talking about these things and change people's minds now. But I still can find it difficult to um, ask a waiter at a restaurant if I can change my order. So there are, there are certain things that I'm, I'm not as confident at. Our words have power. For thousands of years, we've been using them to change minds and win arguments. Sometimes we need only a very few words to make the point. We're brilliant at devising snappy hashtags. And if we go on a protest march, it's short, sharp slogans that we put on our placards. Actually, the most famous slogan ever was written on a Roman placard over 2,000 years ago. After a victory in battle, Julius Caesar, Rome's most famous general and dictator, paraded into Rome with a placard which had a very catchy phrase written on it. Feni, vidi, viki. I came, I saw, I conquered. These must be the most famous words that Caesar ever wrote. They're probably the most famous words in the whole of the Latin language. With just three words, or six in English, Caesar was making the point that he had not just won, but he had won extremely quickly. They've got tremendous zing, rhythm, and they reach the point. It's all a lot less than the average tweet. But sometimes you need more than a few words to make your point. In fact, in ancient Greece and Rome, a whole science grew up around how to make an effective speech because it was really, really important. Many people, for example, had to defend themselves in court and then it could be a matter of life and death. Even now, we can pick up a tip or two about how to make a good speech from those Greeks and Romans. Demosthenes was one of the most famous speakers in ancient Greece. He started off representing himself in court. The story goes that Demosthenes wanted to strengthen his voice. 
Remember, you were talking to big crowds in the open air, sometimes in the wind and rain, and this was before microphones were invented. So how did he do it? Alex Horn is about to find out. We have three tasks for you. What I want you to do is work out from the three tasks which you think Demosthenes would have used to train his voice. Oh, OK, fun game. Of course, ancient Greeks would have spoken uh, ancient Greek, ancient or Greek. Greek to them. I or thought. Greek to them, yes, it was all Greek to them. But for us, it's English. It's row, row, row your boat. Love it. And OK, we... well, here are three envelopes I prepared earlier. I would like you to select one at random, and that will be your first task. OK, shut my eyes and pick that one. Yes? Yes. Say your lines all in one breath. Deep breath, row, row, row your boat as many times as you possibly can in a single breath. OK. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life. No. That was fantastic. It's a new world record, is it? Probably. Probably. Second task and second choice. I'm going to put yellow, Tim. Okie doke. What could it be? It says, say your lines running up a hill. Running up the hill. Really? Stranger things have happened. Very good cultural reference, Tim. And I have a little prop for you, which is a genuine, authentic ancient Greek headband. Mmm. Fresh. And this will help? Yes. Right then, off I go. Are you escorting me up the hill, Tim? No, 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 I'll just no? stand here and do the hard work of watching. OK, here we go. Row, row, row your boat. We're running up a hill. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 light with butter dream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row, row, row. Um. Ha, how was that? It's awful, it was a very steep hill. You've got one task left and one choice of envelope left. Right, I'll have the blue one, you can have the sweaty headband. Uh, thank you very much. OK. This one says, say your lines with a mouth full of pebbles. With a mouth full of pebbles? Really? Well, I have a pebble here. OK. Is it really? I don't think we should use that. I don't want to. No. Um, what are we going to use instead? That's your sweet? Oh, a mouthful of sweets. It's much better. OK. Right. That sort of thing? Yeah. What is that? What makes your mouth? Standard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 so you've completed the three tasks. Marvellous. Thank you. Which of the three do you think Demosthenes used to perfect his speaking technique? Hmm. Well, it can't be pebbles because of health and safety regulations. Uh, yes, absolutely. I don't think it would be running up a hill because I don't think anyone would be stupid enough to agree to do that. So I'm going to say all in one breath, Tim. Well, in fact, actually, Alex, it was all three. Do you want to hear the most amazing thing that you I think did? so, yes, please. What he would do was he'd lock himself indoors and shave half his hair off so that he couldn't leave the house for fear of embarrassment until he'd finished working on his speeches. Wow, well, I'm glad we didn't have to do that one. Uh, well, I have got some clippers here. Mm, uh, no. Do you want to... No, thank you, Tim. Sure? No, no, I've got to go, no, I've got to sure? go. Come back, come back, come back, come back! No. no. Demosthenes knew that if you wanted to win people over, it wasn't just what you said, it was how you said it. In ancient Rome, they didn't just think about their voices, they thought about the whole body. Ready for another task, Alex? Right, so now we're going to get you to give a speech like a Roman politician. OK. And in order to do that, I'm afraid I'm going to have to dress you like a Roman politician because you wouldn't be able to get up onto that stage unless you had on a toga. Right. I'll take this off? No, no, please don't. And it's not just wearing a toga that will help Alex speak like a Roman. It's also about what you do with your body at the same time. And thankfully, the Romans had a book for that. Where's that come from? Handbooks like this told Romans what gestures to use to make their arguments more persuasive. They also told you how to plan your speeches, use language cleverly, and remember it all. So can this book help Alex make some authentic Roman lines extra persuasive? So this is about Julius Caesar, uh -huh. and it's about him being a bit too much like a king. So he is wearing his purple toga, on his golden chair, a garland on his head. Uh. 
What an idiot. So one thing after another thing after another thing makes it really memorable. Rule of three. We also need to think about what you do with your body. What gestures you do at the same time. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with the feet. Start with the feet always. Yep. Put some weight on your right foot. But don't put your foot forward. Uh, Need to stand, stand straight. Right. Next, I want you to make sure your chest is straight. Great posture. Lovely. Excellent. And the last thing is about your eyebrows. Eyebrows. The author of this book was quite interested in eyebrows. It says, much also is done by the eyebrows because these, to a certain extent, shape the eyes and command the forehead. Right, okay, ready? Julius Caesar in his purple toga, on his golden chair, with his garland on his head. Brilliant. Yeah. Quite powerful. Very powerful, yeah. I'm persuaded. So this one is, the rocks and deserts respond to the voice. What does that mean? It's big and it's sweeping, but it also means that even things that aren't living can be persuaded by an orator. Right, if I deliver it well enough. If you deliver it well enough. Okay. We also need to have the gesture. Okay, what are we doing this time? Squat? Do you want me to squat? Not right now. No. For this one, we're going to have a big sweeping arm to go with your rocks and deserts. Fantastic. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. So you've got your sweeping arm, but I also need you to pull your toe back a bit at the same time. Naughty. Okay. Like that? Yeah, like that. Okay. I like that. I'll give it a go. The rocks and deserts respond to the voice. Ooh, very nice. Was it? But a bit more booming? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, here we go. The rocks and deserts respond to the voice. Fantastic. Excellent work. Yeah? I think you're ready. I'm ready. I'll give it a go. The rocks and deserts respond to the voice. These techniques might be thousands of years old, but people have continued to use them throughout history to change people's minds and sometimes they have been extremely dangerous. It's a really powerful speech in terms of how effective it is. You can see that from the reaction of the audience. And he's really, again, using a lot of technique in order to make sure that happens. One of the techniques, of course, is the rule of three. Germany, Germany, Germany. It's simple, but it's so effective. It's so persuasive. It reminds people why they're there, what it is they're fighting for, and it really brings up that spirit of patriotism. One other classical technique that's very clearly picked up here is the use of gesture. All of this just makes it incredibly effective, as we can see. Yes, and very dangerous as well. From the ancient world to now, people have thought very hard about how to use words to change people's minds and win arguments. It's the most powerful tool that we have for getting others to do what we want. But this stuff is potentially very, very dangerous. For that reason, we as listeners also need to develop the skills to allow us to become more powerful, more critical listeners.